That will that never, never work. work. You can't, you can't push, push us. us. Seriously? No, 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 Welcome to Horrible Writing, the rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 40 of Horrible Writing. This time around, we are continuing our writer, author, blogger, audio dramatist interview series. And uh, I'm really excited about this one. It's going to be a shift from some of the more personal stuff that we've talked about on the show so far to something that's a bigger picture item, but a very important item to address, especially as creatives. And I think you're going to take walk away from this episode learning a lot. I know I'm going to. This time around, I have a Dee Ward on Sing with me. She's a writer, blogger. She's the founder and editor-in-chief of Raising World Children magazine, which has got a neat vision. I'm going to read it to you real quick. The vision is to have a more unified generation that is aware and empathetic to the differences as well as similarities that we all have. She's also been featured in Thrive Global and the Huffington Post. Aditi, welcome to Horrible Writing. Hey, Paul. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to learn a lot from you. You're going to become the teacher this morning, so I hope you're ready. (laughs) Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. I just hope that we can learn from each other. I think I think we will. I don't know how much I have to teach, but I know you do. <laughs> oh, you definitely have. I've been listening to a couple of your podcasts, and there is so much good stuff out there. Well, thank you. I appre- I'm, I'm very lucky. I've had a, a bunch of wa- wonderful writers like yourself, you know, who are willing to come on and share these, you know, sometimes really sensitive things. And it's and I love seeing the community come together and being willing to help each other out like that. Yes, it is important to share our stories. It is. So let's talk about stories. You and I have been doing some talking back and forth, and you pitched a wonderful idea to me about how we need to be brave using our cultural experiences, you know, in our writing, in our art, whatever any listener listening to this show is doing out there in the world, but tapping into and using those cultural experiences. But you caveated it for me about being brave. So what I'd love to do is first get an idea of who you are and where you've come from. I've read up on you, but the listener may not know about your background. So can you tell us a little bit about your story so we can frame it in the discussion about cultural background? Well, uh, I'm glad you didn't ask me who, where are you from or uh, who are you exactly? <laughs> because that is something when people usually ask someone and I, that is where my story starts actually. Uh, when you go to my website, that's one of the first things that people see. Initially, I used to feel like I was the girl from nowhere because uh, when someone asks me, uh, where are you from? I say, uh, I was born and raised in Kuwait. I'm an Indian by birth. My father is from Banaras and my mom is a Maharashtrian. Uh, we are Rajputs, basically from Rajasthan. Uh, but being from Kuwait I don't really know much about India as such (laughs) (laughs) so yes so uh, and India uh, I don't know if you know this uh, is very connected by religion and languages so you really need to be able to fit into certain uh, cliques uh, if I may say so Uh, and if you don't uh, it's not that you don't fit in uh, you feel a little bit left out often but uh, Over time, once I became a parent, I realized that uh, it's not that I'm the girl from nowhere. It's the fact that uh, all my experiences in my life have added up. And it's beautiful because uh, I have experienced so much through all my friends and all my friends of friends that I'm able to share every single culture with my children today. And that's a little bit about where uh, Raising World Children, my global platform came from. And I, and, I, and I love it. And I love the concept. As I read more about, uh, about what you're doing, it's a beautiful concept. It really is. So let's talk about that. What do you mean when you're talking about being brave using our cultural experiences, understanding that most of the people who hear this episode are going to be, you know, writers, poets, bloggers, you know, some visual artists do listen, but mostly it's writers. 
Yes, uh, I do understand that uh, uh, it is very difficult to put your story out there uh, for new bloggers, especially or new writers. If you uh, remember when you started off, Paul, uh, it is a very hesitant feeling, right? Yes. When you're writing, uh, you're like, oh, should I put this out there? Uh, will my parents be reading it? Will my uh, and once you become older, will my husband be re reading it? Will my ex-boyfriend be reading it? You know, those kind of things. And uh, it is very uh, difficult to put yourself out there because when you put a piece of writing or any piece of art out there, you're basically bearing a bit of your soul. And I think it is so important for us to be able to have conversations about our perspectives because I think in today's world, uh, unfortunately, due to targeted social media, uh, we are so uh, in our own bubbles that it is um, uh, people have forgotten to agree to disagree. Yes. And I think uh, this is so important that we diversify our conversations. So when I talk about being brave, uh, where your cultural stories are concerned, uh, and I'm not talking about cultures in terms of uh, arts or dance or music over here, I'm talking about cultures in terms of uh, ways of life, which may be uh, whatever, you know, whatever choice of life you have, or language you speak, or uh, city you live in, you know, those kind of things, because life changes every two hours of travel. I mean, I have been to Philadelphia, which is four hours from here, and I find the city so beautiful. And I cannot wait to go back because it is so different from Richmond, where I live. Mm -hmm. In India itself, uh, Mumbai is so different from uh, uh, Bhopal, and Bhopal is so different from Delhi. And uh, these are things that people are not aware of. People think, oh, right. Indians are like this, and Americans are like this. And that's not how life is, is it? So uh, that is where I think uh, we need to be brave and talk about ourselves because I think uh, because of uh, the uh, stigma against, uh, I think, uh, this concept of uh, being uh, not being able to voice your opinion, I think a lot of people uh, are not willing to put their stories out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially because of trolls because which it is a very big thing which people uh, are doing these days. There are a lot uh, less people who are writing true stories compared to a lot more people who just uh, put in a one-line statement saying, hey, you suck, you know? <laughs> and uh, that creates a big sphere of uh, people saying, hey, what if I say something and this other person gets offended? And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's really scary. I know it is scary because uh, as the chief editor of my magazine, a lot of stories come on my, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. But you'll, you'll see a lot of submissions at, at the yes, magazine. Uh, yes, exactly. And uh, uh, I see a lot of submissions and often even I question that should I put this out there? But uh, then it is my responsibility to be true to what we stand for, which is diversity in conversations, mm -hmm. whether I agree with the perspective or not. So that's part of what I am talking about. You know, and that's a real, I that's a really brave thing to do. Like you packaged it so well, you really you framed it really well in this day and age, social media, and it does seem as if we're separating more and more. To to stay true to that calling, to that to that objective of bringing diverse voices, that is a brave thing to do because, like you said, I mean. You're, and you're more than welcome. Please do share your experience with it. I would assume that that would almost open you up for more vitriol, for more trolling, because you do include, you know, the diverse voices and people just, I don't know what it is, but we just don't want to hear a lot of people don't want to hear that broad range of voices. Do you guys yes. see that a lot? Do you see, do you feel like you're, making a more positive impact than hearing from those detractors, if you will, because of, you know, people just so afraid of change? Uh, well, according to this, uh, my experience, I have seen that I tend to uh, completely negate negative feedback <laughs> <laughs> because unless it is a person who is actually, uh, worth my time in terms mm -hmm. of uh, a perspective because I'm open to being wrong. I say, if you can prove me wrong, please do, you know, because I am sure up, my perspective is not right 120%. I could be completely wrong in the way I see a, a subject. But it is often that when you look at a perspective from another person's point of view, you could be like, wow, I didn't even think about mm -hmm. that. And this is incredible. And uh, 
uh, where I'm concerned, like uh, when we started doing our YouTube videos, uh, I'm not talking about writing here, but this is just an example. I had a very close friend come up and say, hey, you know what? Your videos are really long and uh, it, it just puts me off. I'm a working mother. I don't have time for uh, seeing a 30 minute video. And I was like, uh, you know what? We're just starting out and this is something I'm trying. And uh, did you see the video? Could you tell me like what? what do you think you know what what could I cut out what do you think I should improve on she's like oh I don't I didn't see the video uh, oh I, I didn't even I don't even read the articles that you write and I was like oh okay <laughs> fine <laughs> so then then I completely just let go of what she's saying because mm -hmm. unless it's someone giving me an Im giving me impact which I can use you know there's really no point of paying attention to such information it is just uh, you should just wash over you kind of thing so I try to because there is so much negativity in the world mm -hmm. but to counter it every single person has a positive perspective as well and yeah. uh, Paul it is I have to say this out to every single person out there for every negative person you will meet there are at least 10 positive people out there who are willing to support you you just need to bid your time and wait for it mm -hmm. and that's how it is no and that's a good comment it, it's just like um, with anything else you know if you're happy you don't usually if you're happy about something someone else is doing, you you're usually content, and it you know and it makes you feel good, and you internalize it, and in you know it, it that helps push you through your day. Whereas if someone has done something to really tick you off, you let everybody in the world know it. So I th I think you're absolutely right to focus yes. on the silent ten people versus that one loud mouth who's just mad or trolling about something. <laughs> Because exactly. it, it is true. We, we tend to do that when we're upset. We tell more people than when someone's made us happy. So let's talk about the, I love to pick your brain because of where you've been in your life, where you are now and what you're doing. From your perspective, what are some of the unique barriers to sharing our culture from your own experience and maybe from some of the writers and the submitters at your magazine? What are some of those, you know... And, and listeners, Aditi and I had this conversation off air, but for you, I feel it's important to frame it. I am very aware as a white male in America that I have a perspective that is pretty ignorant to a lot of things, a lot of experiences. And Aditi's been wonderful to come on and agree to talk about this stuff with us. So when I ask her these questions, she's, al she's already prepared and she knows this is why I'm asking them. But I think it's important. I think it's important for us to frame that conversation and try to understand what other people do or have been experiencing. So Aditi, for that, for that the unique barriers to, to sharing um, your culture, your cultural experiences in your writing, what are those things? I think uh, the first thing would be fear. Because, that, as I mentioned, there are so many trolls out there. And those are imaginary trolls, you know. Because unless you put your work out there, you're not even going to have even a couple of eyeballs. So first, I think that's the first barrier you need to overcome. I think the second barrier to overcome is to accept the fact that people do not know about a lot of things. Like, you would, I would assume, not know about the fact that I that Bombay is different. Bombay used to be, sorry, Mumbai used to be called Bombay. And, you know, people are very passionate about whether they call a city uh, Bombay or Mumbai. You know, that's a very niche thing that a lot of people do not even know about. Right. And people outside of India or Bombay even don't even care about it, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so these are like small, tiny things that matter. And, but if you, unless you bring them up in conversation and unless you're a Bombayite or a Mumbai wala, as they would say, you would, no one would care, you know. But uh, it is important to accept the fact that people don't know about stuff. And that's mm -hmm. okay, you know, it's completely fine for someone to be ignorant about something as long as they're willing to be aware about it. Right. If you, uh, my husband says this beautiful thing that uh, I don't know where he's read it from, but he says it to me that it is important to know what you don't know. Yes, it is. It is fine as long as you uh, are aware of what you know and what you don't know. But don't pretend to know what you don't know. Right. You know, as long as you're willing to accept the fact that, hey, you know what? I don't know about this. Let me read about it or let me talk to someone about it with an open mind. If you see about our magazine also, I mentioned that we are looking for open-minded parents and we are willing to talk to any open-minded parents and put any perspective out there. We are willing to take that brave stand for any writer out there because there are people out there who are scared to say something because they think they that 
their perspective is not important right. but every every single story is important every single voice is important uh like i mentioned uh and it is uh every single life is important you know you do not uh, pe- people tend to presume a lot you know they, they say, think that oh this person looks like this uh sounds like this or you know has this certain thing is going to be just like that you know and that's not how it is uh talking about you <laughs> i would say uh, like what about you uh, sorry what you were mentioning earlier uh i want to bring up my mom uh, she's from another generation of course and uh, in kuwait uh, there used to be only one channel kuwait tv okay and there you get uh, television which is cut off like you don't see any kissing scenes uh, no uh, anything that is over pg is edited out you the oh, television wow. you see is completely completely sober okay so for the longest time i did not even know that there is something in those scenes okay so <laughs> when i watched television in america i was like hey i didn't know the scene was in this <laughs> in, <laughs> in the show or you know i didn't know this was a pg 14 television and uh, i became so aware about television ratings because when once i had my children because uh, in india no program or no television show has a rating which is very which has a very big issue because uh, indian parents tend to show every single show uh, watch every single show in front of their kids and uh, most of the shows unfortunately are not uh, you know uh, appropriate for kids oh okay that's, yeah so that's just one of the examples about things that people are not aware of and unless we increase the awareness people are going to be like oh you know what i'm fine in my bubble and you know things are fine so these are a few of the things that i think uh, people need to be more aware of and i think the fourth thing would be uh, to be able to agree to disagree i'm so uh, sorry to say a lot of people are like hey you know what i know what i know best and that's fine mm-hmm. and that's not how it is you know you should be uh, able to accept the fact that hey uh, your perspective just might be wrong uh because often i've had conversations and i've said something and i'm not i'm not, never scared to voice my opinion i've i have an opinion on everything <laughs> so i i i voice my opinion and a lot of times i have been proven wrong i've been told that hey you know what no this is not something uh, you don't know the history behind it and i'm like hey you know what hey that makes a lot more sense now and i totally get it now so those are some of the things that you should people need to understand i think I think and that's a great segue into what I wanted to ask you next because you and I are sitting sitting here having this yeah. conversation at the end of March in 2018. Listeners, you'll actually hear this in May of 2018, but one of the uh you know t- exactly what you were just talking about, no thinking we know what we don't know kind of perspective and and being closed off to hearing these voices. Aditi, I don't know how much of a you know popular Uh, pop culture fan you are but you know in America one of the hot button issues lately has been um you know people of color and women being represented in superhero movies and the kickback that those movies have received because people just don't want to be some people don't want to be open to seeing a black superhero or a woman superhero right they j- they want their <laughs> superheroes packaged in a certain way and they don't want anything different and i you know paul's opinion you know those two movies were stellar i loved them they were <laughs> they were fantastic they were better than a lot of this garbage that we see lately so <laughs> I, it's so so important to help people feel comfortable and and feel brave to share those and you when when you were answering that question you made me jot down another question that i hadn't thought about again which is why i'm so thrilled to have you on here so you were talking about This is something I don't get and I was watching an episode of Love. It's a Netflix series um and it was just so profound for me as a male. The two women were sitting on the couch and one was having a relationship issue and her friend was trying to help her and she turned to her friend and she said something. I I'm paraphrasing. She said something along the lines of you need to act like a man. A man would just take up space. They wouldn't ask for permission. in this and i it, i really resonated with that because i've done another talk show podcast where i used to talk to religious minorities and try to understand their perspective and i got that same kind of feedback that you know um my voice isn't important nobody wants to hear my voice 
I don't feel like I have the right to share my voice. And for me, that was just such a revelation. So, Aditi, you said that when you were answering that one in relation to the stories at the magazine and th- some of the things you get. Can you help us understand, maybe, you, this may not be a fair question, but can you help us understand why there are, what contributes to that? What, what environment makes a person feel like their voice isn't important? Because that's one I personally, I really struggle to understand. Uh, <laughs> you should never ask this question to an Indian woman, Paul. <laughs> Real? See, there we go, yes. listeners. <laughs> because I'll give you an example, okay. which, 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 which just might surprise you. I don't know uh, if it would or not, but uh, here goes. Uh, I got married. It was the second day of my marriage. So in India, uh, the second day you have fest, uh, you have a lot of small games that you play with your husband in front of all relatives and family friends. And then people come visit you. They bring gifts for you because you're the new bride and uh, this lady who is a a friend of my mother-in-law's she came to visit me now this lady is the owner of a school she is profound in her uh, experience worldwide because she had lived in London and uh, she came to me and she's like uh, oh wonderful it's so nice that uh," and she's speaking in English she's got an accent and all that so uh, she's speaking and she's like uh, oh you know what Uh, be, be completely comfortable in knowing that you're a second class citizen from today onwards because you're going to be second to every single wish that your husband has. And uh, you just need to know that. And that moment has remained with me till today. And that's something I bring up so often because it is ridiculous the amount of uh, pushback that women get from other women, especially from my mother's generation, about how important it is to be submissive to our to the males in our uh, environment, be it our uh, husbands, our sons, our brothers. uh, And I think that's a lot of what contributes. In India, it is done outright. I don't know how it is in America, unfortunately, because I'm not very, uh, I mean, of course, I've not been in many American households inside. (laughs) So I don't know. But uh, yes, that's that's one of the biggest examples I can give. Uh, It happens a lot in India uh, where... uh, And every single, uh, if you visit our website, I think we have had five articles about uh, how feminism is changing in India and how it needs to change in India and how it looks in India and what women are doing differently now, (laughs) because that's, it's a hot button issue for most Indian women today, especially of my age, because we hope and pray and try our, are trying our best that our daughters never feel how we have felt, especially after marriage. I mean, I uh, must give credit to my parents because I was an only child for 10 years. I have never had a problem feeling I was less than ever. But uh, it happens to a lot of women. They do not feel comfortable sharing what they've experienced. They do not feel comfortable uh, voicing what they want. They expect their husbands to be the first people to go outside and participate in events or be uh, representatives of the family or, or do stuff. Whereas in my family, if there's a school meeting, I'm the person who goes. If there's uh, anything happening regarding the, to the kids or a uh, lot of things, I'm the person who goes. But if you see in a lot of other things, uh, it's it's not by because of a situation. It's just because by design that the husband goes, okay. you know. So that's just one of the things that happens. And uh, that's what uh, I it's uh, very funny that you mentioned this because this is an exact quote from an article that one of the writers has written for us, which I made a quote of and a graphic out of where girls are taught to be taught to take very little space. Wow, we are okay. expected to take little space in everyone's lives. Did you know that this episode of Horrible Writing is brought to you by my first novel? called Chasing the Demon, which you can find on Amazon now. Order it today. Paperback goes out right away. It will release digitally on June 10th. It's a thriller adapted from the first season of my subject found audio drama. It follows Jared Strong, a man who is haunted by a memory from his childhood that drives his passions as an adult, drives him into the forests of the Pacific Northwest, to chase a demon that's been haunting him since his youth. He has given up a lot in this struggle, and he might have to give up more. If you're enjoying this show, 
If you enjoy thrillers, if you like stories that are just fun to adventure along with, pick up a copy of Chasing the Demon today or tell a friend to pick up a copy or both of you pick up a copy. If you do, I want to thank you in advance. And of course, as always, I want to thank you for your listens. Now, let's get back to this interview with Aditi. Wow, so... See, and I, well, how weird is it that I happen to use a quote from a TV show that can't really... But that's, so, again, it's so profound. And that's why I was so excited when you pitched this idea. Because I feel yeah. I have so much to learn. I'm one of those dorks that I will, when I get on Netflix... If I'm wearing my glasses, if I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> I can't read subtitled movies. But if I've okay. got my glasses, I love subtitled movies because okay. you just, I mean, you can learn so much. You can't learn everything. And I'm not trying to claim that. But there's just so many things to learn. I'm like a, a newborn. You know what I mean? When I watch a movie that's actually filmed in another country and all the scenes are in another country and all the scenery is, there's just so many little things you can pick up on. And it's such a rich experience. I love it. So these things are important. How do you do that at your magazine then? How do you foster a a platform where it's safe for these voices to, to speak out, especially understanding a little better what you just shared? What do you do and and how do you how do you get those voices in the first place where they can feel like they can reach out to you and share their story? Uh firstly I make sure that uh I are Platform is open for everyone. I It's open for kids. It's open for uh, new writers. It's open for any person who wants to write. Uh, even our uh, YouTube channel, uh, I'm because I know a lot of people would rather speak than write. Uh, that's the only reason we have a YouTube channel <laughs> <laughs> is because I want I, I just want stories out there. Because like you, uh, Paul, I'm a geek for stories. I uh, Someone said this about me and I loved it, which is why I'm sharing it, that I've never met a stranger in my life. As long as the person smiles back at, back at me, I'll have a conversation. Mm-hmm. So uh, I love uh, hearing about people because I feel I have one life yeah. and I want to learn a, as much about the world and the people in it because it's the people that make up this world. And uh, that's so important that, you know, every single person who wants to learn has stories out there and I think that's what you and I are doing we're trying to get as many people out there sharing their stories for all the others out there who are willing to listen and learn and Mm -hmm. experience along with us so I think uh, that's what it is and as far as fostering it is concerned I have a very strict policy about uh, not being offensive Uh, any uh, comments that are uh, comments are moderated by me so anything that is uh, horrible is read by me and I delete it I, I know I'm not supposed to delete it, but I don't want any writer reading uh, bad comments because that's not what they're doing for me. Right. I want people to be get positive feedback only. Uh, and unless, unless it is, of course, a genuine response. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's just like you suck, I will not publish it. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's spam, I don't publish it. But if it is a genuine response, of course, I publish that. I mean, because it's about contra- uh having a healthy argument yeah you know that that's very important but if someone just said hey you know what this doesn't make any sense or you know if unless you prove the fact that you know you're saying something which has an established uh thing then it's fine that's of course we because we are all about having positive encouraging uh healthy diverse conversations that's what raising world children is all about that's awesome and you know in those the people who just want to say nasty things, they've got plenty of other places. You, yes. You're totally in your, I, I'm with you. I think you're, especially considering what you're doing and what your vision is, that's important, yeah. is to protect those people who are sharing their voices. And exactly. I, I, I love that. I don't have any problem with that because haters, you know, they've got a bazillion platforms. They can go be nasty <laughs> with other people. Yes. So and- help, uh, help. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry. And uh, sorry, I was just saying, I, I feel like a very mother hen with everyone who writes with us. <laughs> so, so especially when my writers get picked up by other platforms or they like I've had a couple of writers be reached out by parents and uh, two of them got opportunities locally because of what they've written for us. So that was awesome. So, uh, so I feel so proud. And uh, then I'm like, I tell everyone about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is, I love it. <laughs> mother hen for other writers. <laughs> That is. So yeah. what is it like, uh, especially this, the vast majority of people who listen to this podcast are in America. Um, what is it? And, and, you know, we're very insular. We, we 
produce all our music and our movies, and that's what we watch, right? There's hardly a foreign film that rolls into America and just breaks a box office, unfortunately. So can you help us understand and maybe be a little more empathetic? What is it like to look at the landscape of movies and music and books and not see your culture represented? What's that like? I honestly don't experience that. I will be, I mean, that's me being brutally honest because I go out there and I search for stuff which is not mine, mm -hmm. you know. So, and I was raised on American culture, Paul. I mean, uh, for me, I was raised in Kuwait. So I, I have seen less of Indian culture compared to American culture, as like visually in television mm -hmm. or in books or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but as far as when I, uh, and I feel that if a person really wants to, they can go and find their uh, culture represented if they don't find it i think it is your job to make sure it's represented so i think even if you just write a story and have it published somewhere you know because there are million publishers out there willing to publish stuff you know there are million there are many people who are out there who are creating youtube videos and there are people doing stuff out there i think if you have a problem with something i think you're the first person who is supposed to help solve that problem i think uh, I'm sorry if anyone feels bad about this. I think we are living in a culture these days who gets offended very quickly. Mm -hmm. I think we need to understand the fact that if you feel there is a problem, you need to be part of the solution rather than feel that, hey, you know what? We are not represented and this is not good enough. I'm sorry if that's <laughs> not what you were looking for, but <laughs> that's how I feel. No, hey, you know, I told uh, all the listeners of this show in episode one that this show was going to be about empowering other writers through candor. And you were very candid. I totally appreciate that. But, you know, I feel, Paul's opinion, we are the masters of our own destiny. And, and you kind of just said that yourself, right? If, there's, if you identify an issue, a problem, be part of the solution. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, but th I feel that's the healthy take. Right. That's what yeah. pushes us forward, sometimes even forces us forward when <laughs> when when culture doesn't want to. So right. and that ties in great with what I was going to follow up with. Uh -huh. So do you obviously you feel a responsibility in creating uh, that that presence of that culture? Right. I mean, that's the whole yes. thing we're talking about here anyways. Yes. So what does what does, if any pressures, does that create on you as a, as a creator yourself? Oh, yes, that's something that I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel it's my responsibility to put as diverse stories out there. So I'm actively looking for people of diverse cultures, of different ways of life, of different uh, perspectives, even those against mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's okay to say it, uh, say, talk about this right now, but even regarding what's happening right now, this is March, we've just had the March for our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm uh, about, uh, I mean, I've been against guns my whole life. And I've been looking actively within our writers and outside about people who have guns and how to be responsible with them or, you know, so you have to I have I feel it's personally so important to represent as diverse voices as possible and uh, to figure out what is uh, what are people looking for and how what else can I offer them so that you know they find what they're looking for in as in terms of uh, content because uh, there is so much happening in the world and uh, paul you're a creator yourself you will ex you will agree with me that the social media and trends are changing at like a lightning pace mm -hmm. you you create something today and by tomorrow it's obsolete yeah <laughs> So you need to find something that resonates with a person no matter what time they are in. So if you notice on my website, uh, we don't have any dates. I have not kept any dates because all our articles are timeless. And uh, I make sure every article is relevant to any person at any given time. So any article is written in such a way that it is pertaining to a s different perspective in any given time of reference. So this is something that we need to understand that, you know, some things in life are never going to change because I totally believe in a, having a strong foundation and having understanding that no matter what changes on the outside constantly, and as long as we have a strong foundation, the rest of it doesn't really matter. So uh, I think uh, as long as I keep 
pushing and find uh, pushing towards finding uh, other writers and other perspectives uh, i'll keep doing my job uh, and i have to keep honest to my mission which is finding diverse conversations and uh, putting them out there that is that is awesome so where do you draw your inspiration what pu- what keeps you pushing through and staying focused on this my children <laughs> the next generation because mm-hmm. uh, i myself uh, for the longest time uh, i felt that i wasn't fitting in anywhere and i know as my children are going to be feeling pretty much the same way because it actually started with an article that i wrote for richmond moms blog uh where i to- spoke about how we are raising world children and that's where raising world children actually came from because my son for a festival said hey i'm american i don't really want to celebrate an indian festival and i completely got it i understand where he's coming from because i don't understand a lot of things my mom does and and she does them now she didn't do them when she was my age she does them now because she's time has passed and a lot of things other things have happened and of course the gulf war changed her perspective in a certain way but uh, you know things uh, evolve and but i think today's generation in the multicultural environment needs more than ever to have parents who understand the fact that we are not living we cannot possibly live in our bubbles we need to understand the world in all its glory to be able to understand our own children yeah and that's beautiful and it's it you give me chills when you answer that because I, that's the important thing i i think we have a responsibility to to do that and that's why i love what you're doing and the work that you're doing out there and uh i'm just going to encourage everybody who listens to this episode don't keep it to yourself share this with somebody who does need to hear this friend or foe like aditi's been saying you know get out make you know help them step outside that bubble or if you've got that person who feels like they don't have a voice you might have a great mechanism uh a, a great platform for them, them to share their voice aditi what do you think Pete, what's your personal feelings on this and the people who do stay in their bubble, what are they missing out on when when they l- go through life in that bubble? I was just going to uh, give a caveat to our previous conversations though first is that uh, we need to have healthy arguments. There is a mm-hmm. way to have put your perspective forward as well. You cannot just say, "Hey, you know what? What you said is fine, but this is what I'm saying." You know, you need to listen to the person as well. And I think uh, when and this ties into your this question where uh, when we live in our bubbles it is unfortunate it is you might not actually be missing out on anything because you will not never realize what else you could have experienced it is only going to have a uh, how would i put it a ripple effect as mm-hmm. you would say in time you will realize slowly and surely that you have been left behind as far as life is concerned a uh, simple example would be youtube videos i have it is such a trend these days for parents to give their kids youtube videos and watch uh, those unboxing of the toys and stuff like that and it's it seems pretty cool but it is reality television for kids and i am Uh, this is just me speaking i have i used to let my kids watch it because it was easy you know the kids have fun they just toggle around and it's it's hap- it's completely it seems like harmless fun but it's not that uh, youtube is not at all uh, monitored by any uh, you know organization so you have no clue what your kids might end up watching uh, i'm completely against kids watching youtube at all at this point of time unless someone can explain it to me otherwise <laughs> but i am strongly for parents watching youtube video i must say that every parent needs to get off uh, whatever they are watching i don't know what it is but uh, make sure to put in your time with youtube videos and especially what's trending these days because it is a very big window into what the teenagers or what the 20s are 20 somethings are doing because it is it is a big window into what is happening in life these days mm-hmm. and that's just something that i would suggest everyone to do what about for anybody who's listening to this they may be a right uh an, an experienced writer they may be a blogger on their own or or thinking about it or they just may be somebody who's really identifying with what you're saying here when you when you think about that person and they're feeling voiceless they're feeling on you know maybe unheard what would you tell them how would you encourage them to step out and and find that safe 
place to share their voice and their story? I think it would be the be- your best bet would be uh, either to go with a publisher, uh, which is already which is medium size or small, which are willing to take in new writers or uh, or medium. Medium is a great platform to find other writers to connect with. Uh, I found it's it's wonderful. Uh, Facebook has a number of uh, groups which allow. Uh, these days for writers to connect with each other and uh, help you take feedback. And I think once you connect with other writers, it just makes it a little bit easier for you to understand how to better yourself. And I think get give a little bit more confidence. Uh, I've recently started writing fiction myself. So I've, uh, I'm getting feedback on that and there's nothing wrong in learning. Uh, don't go into anything uh, expecting to be applauded. Go in willing to learn. And I think you'll be completely fine. I love that piece of advice. I'm going to steal that from you. I'm going to have to put a meme together for you when we publish this episode. Don't go in expecting applause. I love that. All right. So, hey, listeners, if this is your first episode of Horrible Writing, you may not know this. I'm going to package this a little bit so that you do. At this point in the show, I'm going to ask Aditi to share a horrible writing experience with us. Now, you may be thinking, Paul, why would you do that? She's your guest. Well, there's a reason. I'll tell you after she's done sharing it. But a horrible writing experience is something that she's been through that she is okay with sharing with us. Um, And there is a point to all this, and I promise we'll wrap it up after she's done sharing it. So, Aditi, what is your horrible writing experience? Uh, I would say... I I will have to go into a little bit of detail, so please bear with me. Uh, I started pitching uh, after having my blog for one and a half year to publications because my dream was getting into one of those large publications and I was pitching to everyone from Babel to Huffington Post to Thrive to everyone, okay? It's it's a writer's dream, right? Getting into any, as a contributor to any one of those big name publications. And I had been trying for six months. Uh, I didn't hear from back from like 40 uh, for like three four months from anyone I heard back from a few places which gave me feedback which was awesome so I could find my voice figure out what I was doing wrong those things so it I had pitched for around 45 times or 50 times I think before I before I finally got accepted into Huffington Post for an article which was doing really well already on my own blog which was uh, about uh, how to teach your kids to um deal uh, with predators themselves and uh, that was awesome you know I did wonderfully and I was so excited and I from there things just flew for me and personally and things just went ahead and then I got accepted into Thrive by Ariana Huffington herself which was awesome for me black cut to after raising world children a couple of months ago as you may know I got uh removed from Huffington Post like a million of other bloggers <laughs> <laughs> and it was quite hard actually because it was not just because it's Huffington Post it is because uh, it was sad because they had to do this because a lot of bloggers were taking money from each other for uh, getting the onto the contributor platform because there was some glitch and they had found a loophole in sharing the link and it was just unfortunate and I was so passionately connected to the fact that that was the first large publication that I got onto and it was it was really sad for me and it was very hard because it took me those 45-50 tries to finally get into it and then they just dropped you one fine morning, you get up and you get see an email that, hey, you know what, we are removing everything that you've done so far for us, which was like I think nine or ten articles of mine, they just completely removed it. And it just hurts. It really hurts even today, actually. (laughs) Yeah, I totally understand that. Yes. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, uh, it was just, uh, it's one of those things, you know, you as a writer, I think as a creative, it's you just have to keep rolling with the punches because no matter how far ahead in life you get, uh, I I have been featured in Richmond Families magazine as uh, on their inside the actual magazine and I've uh, I've contributed as an author. I'm on Thrive. Uh, I'm on Richmond Mom's blog. But still, you know, there's that hole in my heart for Huffington Post. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally, I, th- I think anybody could relate to that. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so, I would say that uh, 
no matter what you do as a writer you're you'll always be a newbie and there's no shame in accepting that that uh, you have to just keep pitching and uh, those pitching is uh, those sorry those pitches are wonderful fun to keep doing <laughs> well and they and they de- i i imagine uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i imagine it made you a better writer that entire experience from having to pitch so often to being able to be featured and then erased from history probably made you a, a better writer and a, and a stronger adult too. Of course. And it's given me this wonderful story to share with every exactly. single writer out there. <laughs> well, and, and listeners, again, one of the reasons, the major reason I ask is because you can take someone like Aditi and you can listen to what she's been through. And if you listen, you just heard it. You, could, you guys don't have the benefit of video like I do, but you can hear it in her voice, how passionate she is about, Huff Poe about what she contributed and about continuing her journey to create and to give that content to the world. All the, and think about the context, 40 or 50 different pitches to the same place. How many times would we give up and not try the 20th time, the 30th time, but she kept pressing, realized that goal, unfortunately kind of took a, a turn for her on the end. But at the same time, she's walked away from it. She's got a little couple more cool scars to show for it. And she's still pressing forward and creating great things. She did not get discouraged. She kept working and pushing through. You got to keep pushing through. You got to do the hard work and don't ex- don't walk in expecting applause. I absolutely love that line. <laughs> so, Adi, let's talk about some of the stuff that you are doing. Maybe some of the stuff you've done recently and some of the things going forward. What can we expect from you? Well, uh, we have a bunch of cool articles coming out on Raising World Children, of course. So please go and visit us. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my book is coming out soon, uh, hopefully uh, for Mother's Day, uh, called uh, Strong Roots Have No Fear. Uh, so that should be a, f- a fun read. It's for uh parents with young kids to help build a strong foundation, uh, especially if you're living in a multicultural environment or want to learn about how to raise your kids in a multicultural environment. That is awesome. I'm so excited to hear that you've got a book coming out very soon. So listeners, I will make sure that I get that link in the show note for you. So you can go over to the website and just go direct to it or just check out the show notes for more information on that. So Aditi, before you get out of here, you've shared so much and I do want to thank you um, because we've talked about sensitive stuff, but important stuff and you know stuff that's aimed at making the world a richer, more positive place. You can't go wrong with that kind of stuff. So now there's a bunch of people who have fallen in love with you and they want to follow you out there on the internet somewhere. How, the, how can folks find you and contact you? Uh, you can uh, email us at contact at raisingworldchildren.com. Uh, you can even send in your uh, any write-ups that you've done uh, if you would like uh, like to share with us. Uh, we even publish uh, kids' artwork because we love anything written or done by kids. So uh, you can send any of the good stuff to contact at raisingworldchildren.com. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter at raisingworldchildren.com. Uh, sorry, not dot .com, <laughs> raisingworldchildren. Uh, that's our handle. And uh, me, you can follow at uh, Aditi uh, Vardhan Singh. Uh, that's my writer profile on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, you can email me at aditi.ws at gmail.com. Excellent. I want to thank you one more time because this I've been looking forward to this for what, like two months now. So oh, this has been, I, I, I just feel so much more enriched. And you were so candid and so just open and honest. And I absolutely, I feel personally enriched today and I know the listeners will too. So thank you so, so much for coming on. Thank you so much, Paul. This was so fun. And uh, it was wonderful to be able to share with such an open and honest person as you, because I've been following your work and it's incredible. Well, we'll see about that. The two books are coming out this year. We'll see how incredible it is. No, seriously, Yay! thank you very much. <laughs> This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sadin, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse, at Writing Horrible, and over at paulsadin.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less.